G'day and welcome to The Review. My name is Simon Orchard and each and every week I'll be throwing my coach's hat on to review some of the best and some of the more baffling parts of the Sultana brand Hockey One League. This week I've grabbed the clipboard off Lockie Anderson and I'm reviewing HC Melbourne's loss to the Canberra Chill on Thursday night. We pick up the game from the opening whistle and straight away we can see the Chill's intention to play a bit of a zone press with an inverted centre forward. Now John O'Bretherton from HC Melbourne finds himself in a great pocket of space and this is exactly how I would beat the Canberra Chill. Little 15 to 20 yard aerials in behind the front line. And you can see, once he makes a clean trap, Chill players collapse from everywhere, opening up a ton of space to the outside. And if your skills are clean, this is a great way to get through a zone press. This passage of play highlights a big weakness of Hockey Club Melbourne's game so far this year. And it's the inability of their back group to approach the line of engagement when distributing. It's up to Damon Steffens here to have a bit more purpose, approach the front line of the Canberra Chill and actually engage them with the dribble before finding a pass. He fires a dangerous ball in and Bretherton is good enough to get it in and out quite quickly. Then we see the same thing happen again from Josh Simmons. Try and approach the line of engagement, draw the attention of one of these two players and then distribute forward. Standing 20 yards away and delivering over a distance is only putting pressure on their midfield and allowing this type of swarm to eventually win the ball in a great spot to launch a counter-attack. This is a really smart passage of play from youngster Max Hendry. We stop the outlet here and check out that swarm again. Three chill players surrounding Hendry, and what he does should be used more often. It's called a trapdoor. He plays over the top of the ball and lets it go through to his teammate in behind. And what I love most is his secondary movement. Let's fast forward a bit because he has another good involvement in a second. Here he is bobbing up again in another nice spot. This time he uses a deflection or redirection to change the angle of the pass around the circle's edge. Then watch his run again. He's on his bike, picks up a loose ball and has a really good goal scoring chance. Great play from Max Hendry. Here we see Hockey Club Melbourne has just earned a penalty corner. We see Simmons set up on the first battery and Steffens on the second. Watch what unfolds on the top. Bang! Simmons and Steffens switch batteries. This is a great way to confuse a defensive unit. The ball is injected and we pause it again. You can see Canberra has sent two runners at Simmons on the second battery. Simmons either sees the two runners or it was already planned in the huddle that he was going to backdoor this pass. That involves picking the ball up as if you were flicking, letting it slide out behind you to a teammate. It's a perfectly delivered ball, and if we stop it again, Simmons is providing a perfectly legal block on both chill players, while Stefan suddenly finds himself in an acre of space. The head side chill player has to rush out and get pressure on the shot, but Stefan's has a prime opportunity to put this ball in the back of the net. Unfortunately, he doesn't quite get hold of it. James Day makes a great stop on the line, but it's a great variation and one that should have resulted in a goal. I've got two clips here that show the disconnect at the moment between the Hockey Club Melbourne players. This is Nathan Efrens taking it on himself to press and pressure. And that's not always a bad thing, unless the rest of your team has no idea what's going on. So Ephraim goes, Davis Atkins sits just in the hole behind and all of a sudden has a corridor you could drive a semi-trailer through. And he drills this ball to Glenn Turner on Route 1 and it's oh so dangerous. A second example, and this is young Cooper Burns at right wing for Hockey Club Melbourne. Have a look here. Unsure of where he's meant to be, looking over his shoulder to try and get guidance from his midfielder. You can see him wondering, do I fall? Do I slide? Do I tuck in? In the end, he goes wide. And so does his midfield partner. It allows the chill to slice them open with ease. And all of a sudden they've beaten the press. And they've also got the ball to the help side. Finally, let's talk about one of the goals of the season so far from Benny Staines. We pick it up with Hockey Club Melbourne high pressing against the chill. As the ball shifts to this left half, Russell Ford at right wing gets his approach line all wrong. Instead of forcing the ball down the sideline, he lets Jay McDonald cut back infield and the dominoes begin to fall. As McDonald does this, have a look at the top of your screen, where Nathan Ephraims and John O'Bretherton are having a chin wag. Ephraims realises that the ball's going to come back across his face, but it's too late. Here, the goal scorer, Ben Staines, starts making his forward foray. Hendry puts his arm out to hand Staines over to Ephraims, but for whatever reason that connection isn't quick enough, and Staines gets two metres ahead of the play. But still, the situation is OK. Josh Simmons is spare in the middle of the field and he's running across and should be able to apply pressure. This is where it starts to go really wrong. The left half for Melbourne, Josh Bretherton, makes a bad decision to leave his man and try and impact the contest. 
Not only does he miss Staines, but he approaches on a really bad line. He's protecting nothing but the corner flag, and Staines is good and clever enough to rip a drag to the inside. From here, it's just a really classy finish. Or is it? Let's rewind. Have a look around. Could anyone else have helped stop this play? Let's watch number 21 for Hockey Club Melbourne in the bottom left of your screen. It's Jake Sharon, and it seems his sole focus is to cover his own man, who isn't really dangerous at this stage. As we roll forward, watch how close he comes to blocking Stain's tomahawk. I believe if he jammed to the middle of the field right away and played a bit more team defence, he stops this goal from happening. So there you go, the review in the books for round three. I'm looking forward to a big round four of action and I can't wait to run my eye over your team next week.